Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us on Core TV Midday News. I am Ebunlomo Adekunle. Oron to Douglas, special advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan on research, documentation and strategy, died in the early hours of Thursday, three weeks after his doctors told him he had a few days to leave. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2008 and had been battling the disease since then with encouraging signs of improvement, his family members say. Douglas, a trusted aide of Jonathan, traveled to the U.S. in March for his regular checkup and was told by his doctors that he could not survive further medication. Unlike in 2011, when he went on the nationwide campaign tour of Jonathan, he was not strong enough to participate in the 2015 campaign. He could no longer go to the office as well. Douglas, who would have clocked 49 on August 6th, started as a young lawyer and environmental rights activist. He was the deputy director of the Environmental Rights Action Friends of the Earth Nigeria, a group devoted to protecting the environment. The Okoroba born humanitarian had degrees in law from the University of Science and Technology, Patakot, and the Montfort, Leicester, England. He was commissioner for information in Bielsa State but resigned in 2005 when DSP Alamesia, then governor, was impeached. He left behind a wife and two sons. The federal government has cautioned residents of northeast Nigeria to be more vigilant in the April 11th governorship elections to avoid any Boko Haram attack. This, according to the coordinator of National Information Center, Mike Omeri, is because of the insurgent's penchant for attacking soft targets. Omeri said this at a news conference in Abuja, where he also reaffirmed government's commitment to stemming the tide of insurgent attacks. In respect of the forthcoming governorship and state assembly elections, we remind the citizens to maintain a similar or even higher level of vigilance and caution to ensure a peaceful and incident-free exercise. You will note that the military's real successes in regaining control of Boko Haram's stronghold in Borno State is a testament to our troops' unwavering commitment to defeating insurgency. Reclaiming Nigerian territories and establishment of an atmosphere of peace and safety remains the government's top priority. <laughs> the Independent National Electoral Commission has presented certificates of return to the winner of the lone Senate seat in the FCT and the two House of Representatives seats. Resident Electoral Commissioner Professor Jacob Jetal handed out the certificates at a brief ceremony in Abuja. PDP's Philip Paduda won the sole Senate seat, while APC and PDP shared the two seats in the lower chamber. We ensure that we build classrooms, we uh, through constituency project boreholes and uh, school furniture uh, and uh, rural electrification and so many, many others that I cannot uh, specifically mention at the moment. But definitely we'll concentrate on the rural areas and ensure that uh, they have a sense of belonging and also ensure that they can get democratic dividends. By the grace of God, they are going to have a quality representation at the National Assembly. So many bills have been passed, so many are still waiting, and by the grace of God, all these bills will be passed by Assembly 8. It is good thing now that I'm a ranking member of the National Assembly, more thing just, just the beginning. I want to appreciate God that has made it possible for us to be elected as a member House of Representative. And I want to assure the people of Abuja South that uh, they have elected uh, Zakaria Ulu based on competency because they have seen my handwork in Gwagwalada Area Council. Though it is not an executive position, but I'm very sure that with friends in National Assembly, we're going to work together like the distinguished senator has spoken. And we are going to work together as one and ensure that we bring new development to Abuja South. To present to the distinguished Senator Philip Denimwaduda, MF Aragas. Congratulations. The wife of the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Kaduna, Hasia El Rufai, has been soliciting support 
from the women folk in the state for her husband's bid. She used a one-day women's summit organized in conjunction with the campaign organization in Kaduna to drum up support for El Rufai. Amina Nabi has more in this report presented from our studio. These are thousands of women who have turned up for the women's summit. They are here to show support for Nasser El Rufai's bid for the Kaduna State Government House. The wife of the governor's chief candidate is convinced that women have a major role to play in determining the winner of the April 11th elections. My husband and I, at the early stage, realized that if we want to bring change to Nigeria, we want to bring change to Kaduna State, we can't do it without the women. Women are very important. So we thought, unlike before, when every government will just say that this is what I'm doing for the women, it is important that the women be part and parcel of the decision making of what they want. It also provided an opportunity for some women to speak on the likely effects of the victory of President elect Muhammadu Buhari on Saturday's elections. I'm very happy because it's, it's, it is a struggle for 12 years. But at least, you know, that showed his steadfastness, that showed his commitment to serve his country. That showed he's dedicated and uh, he's a man of his word. So we're really very happy that at least he did not give up because the Nigerian people look upon him as a role model, as a figure and as a pillar for him to salvage this country. And I'm so happy that today we, he is the president-elect. The governorship candidate Nasser El Rufai on his part appealed to women to come out en masse as they did on March the 28th. We think we should listen to our women and hear from them what ways the state government can help. In addition, since General Buhari is the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whatever suggestions we get from our women to help Nigerian women generally, we will pass that on also to General Muhammad Buhari. We are here to listen to them, not to tell them what we intend to do, but to hear from them. Erufa is clearly confident of victory on Saturday. And he made it known to the women that he has mandated his wife to consult with them with a view to knowing their pressing needs in order to address them as the next governor of Katna State. In what is seen as acting on the orders of their political leader, thousands of members of the People's Democratic Party in Kwara State, believed to be loyal to Bimzola Saraki, have defected to the All Progressives Congress. The defectors include the state party secretary, women leader, youth leader, and five House of Assembly candidates at the Saturday election. The state chairman of the PDP, however, dismissed the defection as not affecting the chances of its party at the Saturday polls. Rashid Rashid has more from Milor. In what has been speculated for weeks in Kwara State, the gale of defection hitting the PDP nationwide has also found its way to the Kwara chapter. Just a few days to the election, over 2,000 members of the party believed to be loyalists of Bim Saraki dumped the party, led by a former speaker of the Kwara House of Assembly, Yisa Benjamin, and some members of the state executive of the PDP. Recall that a fortnight ago, precisely on the eve of the presidential national assembly elections, Senator Bemi Shular Saraki directed that all the supporters from across the 16 local government areas of Kwara State to troop out and vote massively for all the candidates of the All Progressive Congress, APC. Recall also that yesterday, till the 7th March 2015, the distinguished Senator formally consummated what she started a fortnight ago by publicly announcing her move to the APC. Isa, who also had five House of Assembly candidates of the PDP in the group that moved to the APC, says the move is imperative as they endorse the candidature of Abdul Fattah Ahmad and the leadership of Bukola Saraki. This decision involved, among other things, the following. The resignation of a number of high-ranking members of the PDP State Executive Council, including the State Secretary, Woman Leader, Youth Leader, and others. The immediate withdrawal of the nomination of more than five House of Assembly candidates that have bought four on the platform of PDP, they are withdrawing their contest. 
are withdrawn from the contest by the grace of God anymore. They've withdrawn already, so they will not go into the contest on, on Saturday. But in a swift reaction, the Kwarse chairman of the PDP, Yola Oyedepo, says the defection won't affect the chances of the PDP. He added that this may be a sign that Kwarans may not be ready for freedom from the Saraki dynasty. It means that they always have a meeting point where they discuss the destiny of Kwara State, how it will continue to be in the family pocket. And uh, maybe when she was even contesting to go to, uh, for the governorship, they were also planning that uh, you go and take a PDP ticket, why I also keep an APC ticket with uh, my crony here. So at the end of the day, uh, whether left or right, it will still end up in the same place. It is all politics of deception in Kuala State. When they were with us, it was apparent that they were not even with us. When they pretended to be with us, they were not with us. So the effect it could have is not different from what it will have if during the period of their pre uh, pretense. So they have, not, they have always, in fact, it will have been better they had gone long before this time. As the PDP loses five hours of assembly seats automatically due to the defection and the coming together of the Saraki dynasty, the Saturday election in Quara, according to political observers, may be a crucial victory for the ruling party. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ilori. As the governorship elections draw closer, the All Progressives Congress has continued to harvest a lot of politicians with their supporters who defected from other parties to join the APC, which they describe as the winning party in the state. A major reason given by those defecting is the need for your state to collaborate with the newly elected central government, thus giving support to Ajimobi, whom they say deserves to continue because of his performance. Omotayalo has details. <laughs> And what is a reoccurring incident all over the country? The All Progressives Congress in Oyo State has again witnessed an influx of politicians from different opposition parties. Beaming with excitement on their new party, the defectors give reasons for dumping their former political parties at the last minute to join the All Progressives Congress in the state. I'm joining because I, I be, I'm convinced that is the man that can take the state to the next level. I'm from our court. We have all seen that it is only APC that can take us to the promised land. I am in the midst of my people now, and I'm very, very happy. I feel highly delighted. I'm back to the fold. All the jobs, all the roads that are constructed by Adeyemi, Abiola, Ajiwobi was quality than other governors that has been ruled for your state so far. For Waid Lawa, his decision to dump the PDP was long decided when he felt former President Olusegun Obasanjo was no longer given the much desired respect by members of the party and has since campaigned for Buhari at the center and Ajimobi at the state level. The lack of fire of Anika Ode continue to insult Obasanjo and because of that I, re I realize him, I regard him as an institution, a, 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 a global leader and that was why I decided to join APC. Then I joined APC because of the good work of Senator Abiola Ajimobi. Even while the fate of Abiola Ajimobi is still undecided, this former PDP market leader says she will stick with the APC regardless of the outcome of the governorship poll. While the much awaited and tightly contested governorship election remains a matter to be decided on Saturday 11 April. The ruling party enjoys more support by the day, though opposition parties say they remain confident of defeating the incumbent at the poll. Omotayu Alo, Core TV News, Ibadan. It's the Core TV Midday News. We'll take a break and return with more reports. Please stay with us.
<laughs> we must learn to lead together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you for being there with us and for more information and news on Core TV, you can visit our social media platform on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News, our Twitter handle at Core TV News MG, and on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Core TV with a space then news. The ongoing political crisis in Akita State is taking a new twist as both parties recruit more soldiers in the political war. The Students' Front, under the ages of the National Association of Nigerian Students, has come hard on the governor, Ayodele Fayoshi, accusing him of neglecting the education sector, especially the ongoing strike at the State University, as he also lend weight to the impeachment process constituted by the 19 APC lawmakers. The state government has, however, cleared the air on allegations levelled against it. As the impeachment crisis rocks the Kitty State, there are no doubts of the pro and anti impeachment groups. But in an apparent move endorsing the activities of the 19 APC lawmakers, the leadership of the National Association of Nigerian Students has passed its comment on the impasse that has engulfed the state. The state government, however, dismissed students' stand as unfortunate and described the group as an extension of the APC. People tell the garment of honor we wear a cap of disgrace. We have noted with neat interest the ongoing political development in the Kiti state. Therefore, the National Association of Nigerian Students now welcomes and throws our weight behind all legal and legitimate moves to restore sanity and dignity to governance in a Kiti state. It's owing the mandate in the in, in, in trust for, for a Kiti people. They claim that they claim to have served the governor impeachment. Their so-called impeachment notice was served in the online newspaper. The student body took the fight to the doorstep of the government, ordering the state to pay the striking workers of the Ekiti State University. This, however, was passed as distortion of fact by the state government. The industrial action at the State University is resolved within the shortest possible time towards ensuring that our students resume within the next seven days. Contrary to this, we shall mobilize our forces for a maximum showdown on the government of Ekiti State. Ayofarushi administration is not owing Ekiti State University. Our administration is not owing any of them subvention. We have paid to date. The coming days is expected to be full of political drama as the House of Assembly election begins in Ekiti. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adwe Kiti. A Lagos-based lawyer, Femi Falano, has advised Ekiti State's governor, Ayofayo Shade, to take the impeachment notice served on him by the 19 All Progressives Congress members of the State House of Assembly seriously, saying their notice is valid before the law, citing Section 91. 96 and 188 of the country's constitution, Falano explained that what was required to serve an impeachment notice was one third of the members of the assembly, noting that the 19 members that signed the notice were more than one third of the total legislators required by the constitution. He added that the constitution did not also stipulate that the impeachment notice must be signed in the assembly chamber. The blockade of the 19 lawmakers at Itawure Junction and their subsequent return to Oshun State has begun to raise issues. The killing of one Temitopia liar at F4 Junction has also pitched the state government against the All Progressives Congress. This is coming as Ikiti APC calls for the arrest of the SA to Fayoshi Liri Olainka alongside some of the pro PDP thugs allegedly found around the House of Assembly complex. Meanwhile, the silence of the police is a source of concern in the state, Rashid Rashid reports. 
F1 in Itaura Junction, a popular route along the Ekiti Osho Express Road, was the setting of political theatre of some sort. Brigadier General Ali Umama was alleged to have sent the 19 APC lawmakers back to Osho at Itaura Junction after F4 Junction had experienced a reported shootout that led to the death of one Temito Beolaya, a commercial driver. These are indeed not the best time for politics as the APC and PDP are said to be at crossroads, while the relatives of Temito Beolaya made their way to the government house in Ado Ekiti. The person who fired the shot was Honorable Gabriel Ogundele, a member of the House of Assembly. They were shooting indiscriminately. They were firing at every object and they fired at Modupe and killed them. If there should be any death, if there should be any victim arising from yesterday, uh, taking over of equity by the hoodlums. It is the government of Ekiti, led by the governor and the PDP, that should be held responsible because our party members, our legislators, were not involved, were not involved in any gunshot. <laughs> And as protest rocks at Doikiti, the APC are crying foul of complicity on the side of the police over the arrest and subsequent release of Kaio Diosho, the commissioner for works and others arrested around the House of Assembly complex. The protest was even peaceful, so there was no need for police harassment and embarrassment. Nothing actually hit me, uh, but uh, at the end of the day we were taken to the state uh, CIB at uh, Inyo Road where we explained to the officer in charge what actually happened. Um, on the basis of which we were released almost immediately. The police, you seriously, as a matter of urgency, invite Lay, among others, for questioning and interrogation. And some of the people that were arrested yesterday, it is very obvious, even by what the police has shown on television everywhere, that they were actually carrying guns. They are the, they are the, uh, the perpetrators. They are the, uh, the people behind any crisis that may have happened in Ekiti yesterday. As the hands now point at the police, which are being accused of complicity on both sides, the Exit Command are evasive on the matter as it declines speaking with journalists. The game is apparently on, but it still remains unknown if the referee is available. Rashid Rashid or TV News at Doikiti. And now in Boston, the man accused of bombing the marathon in 2013 has been found guilty of all 30 charges that he faced, many of which carried a death penalty. The jury in Massachusetts will now decide what sentence 21-year-old Jokar Tsarnaev will receive. Three people were killed and more than 260 injured when the bombs exploded at the finish line in April 2013. His lawyers maintained he played a role in the attacks but said his older brother was the driving force. A police officer was killed in the days following the attack at Sarev and his brother, who also died, attempted to flee. The decision was reached on Wednesday after the jury deliberated for just over 12 hours spread over two days. Tanev kept his hands folded in front of him and looked down as the guilty verdicts were read. And that's it on the news for this hour. Join us again top of the hour for more. Many thanks for watching. I am Ebulomo Adivni.